Hey everyone, this is No Filter and Nintendo Podcast. I'm your host, Wizra, and this is episode 22 being recorded on December 15th, 2018. And yes, this is, I guess, the holiday Christmas episode for everybody. I have a ton to go over with you guys today. Um, a lot will be about games that are coming out, because one of the things I think is best about this time of year, at least with the gaming scene nowadays, is that there are so many games you can get for cheap on, uh, you know, whether it be on the eShop or the PlayStation Store or whatever the case is, Steam. Whereas back in the day when I was growing up, you know, every game was like a basically a $60 full game release kind of a thing. So you would only get maybe one or maybe two if you're lucky for Christmas, you know, and... um so with all these new games here now, and there's so many uh, smaller games, so for the younger people out there, and even if you're older, you have so many more opportunities to play a lot of different games, different genres around the holidays. You know, bundle up if you're in a colder climate, bundle up, play some games, have some hot chocolate or coffee. You know, it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to be going over a ton of... Or not a ton, but I'm going going over quite a few uh, indie games that uh, I've played recently that I really enjoy on the eShop. Um, some are really great, some are a little more mediocre, but I'll kind of go over uh, which are which. I also have another segment uh, that I'm going to go over, which is the best multiplayer games. Because I figured, again, around Christmas time, whether it's family coming back to your, uh, to your house or something like that, and you're ready to play finally again, or siblings or anything, and you're finally coming together, games are one of the unifying factors you know whether it be jackbox party pack or all these other type of games out there here are i'm going to have a list of the 10 uh of my top 10 i guess recent uh you know indie or you know cheaper mo- multiplayer co-op games that you can play on the eShop, which is uh really good there's some true gems in there and uh you know just playing co-op or playing multiplayer with family around the holidays is also another staple that is really a lot of fun whether it be you know mario kart or anything bigger like that or all of these more bite-sized experiences that if you're you know i feel like a lot of people are probably getting sick of playing mario kart all the time or you know although i know we do a smash out so i know a lot of people will be playing that but some of these are definitely a lot cheaper different bite-sized experiences and i think that could be a lot of fun for a family uh, around christmas time so i'm going to be going over those as well and for the final segment of this podcast i'm going to be going over some of my Christmas memories, uh, gaming uh, related, Um, because I always like to talk about this stuff, because gaming, you know, being a gamer growing up in Christmas, it's always a little bit different, you know, you're always asking for a game, you know, you get a system or something for Christmas, and some of my memories of what I've, you know, received when I was growing up, and also what I've given away and stuff like that, Uh, you know, games just bring joy around this time of year. Um, you know, everywhere, and I think it's a good thing to celebrate. So I'm going to be going over some of my memories. I'd love to hear what you guys have, uh, some of your favorite gaming memories relating to Christmas. Um, I'd love to hear that in the uh, comment section as well. So, yeah, let's just jump right into this. I have uh, quite a few uh, indie games I want to go over here, so let's get started. So I got quite a few, so I'm going to be kind of railing off these a little bit quicker than normal, kind of bite-sized reviews, and I will definitely give you guys my suggestion for taking a look at them, because again, as we all know, there are a ton on the eShop, and as you guys know, I love the indie game, just being able to try different things. Some of them are true, amazing gem, hidden gems, and some are, you know, a little less so, kind of just poured it over with not much effort. I'll let you guys know which is which, and uh, which ones I definitely think you should check out, so... First one is a Sky Time, and this comes from Sometimes You. They're a big developer on the Switch, and uh, Sky Time is a first-person action platformer. Uh, it's more of a speed, um, uh, uh, I guess, a time limit-based uh, speed running uh, first-person action platformer. And I love speed running platformers. I, that is the best part about a platformer game to me is that you're just running straight. You're basically just hitting A to jump, hold it a little longer to jump higher, slide under stuff and just kind of move around. This game has that, but the kind of the spin with this one, it, you know, as the uh, title alludes to, Sky Time, um, you actually have a stopwatch in one hand basically that stops time, which basically lets you slow down everything around you while you'll still keep moving slightly faster. But if you stop in midair, you will kind of propel yourself forward a little bit quicker. So say you're just jumping off of a, uh, it's in like an urban futuristic setting. Say you're just jumping off a building trying to reach another uh, building on the other side. If you're just jumping normally, you probably won't make it. However, if you jump, hit the timer, you will kind of propel yourself forward while the time is still slow around you to land and you know reach farther distances. So that's one of the um, 
uh, elements of the game and the other one is uh, you have basically a wrench with you that you can throw at enemies and stuff like that uh, it's only i think it was only about eight maybe ten levels um so it's not that large uh i did enjoy it uh, it's not the prettiest game or anything like that but the gameplay is solid and i feel like that's kind of with most of what sky uh with uh, sometimes you games are is they have a solid foundation but whether it's just the budget isn't there or whatever the case is, it's not complete. It's not completely prettied up. So these are type of games here. At least Sky Time, I would say, is a game. Either wait for a sale, or if you see a video of it, take a look and see what you think. Because if you like first person kind of platformers, um, I think this could be one for you. It's not an expensive game or anything like that. So that could be one uh, for you to keep an eye on around the holiday season. Uh, next game is called Stay, which is a point and click. I guess you can say like suspenseful horror game, which is very unique in in some of these ways here. So stay, um, essentially you play as a guy who gets abducted and he wakes up in a an empty room with a computer, and you, or sorry, you don't play as him. That is another character. You play as a person within the computer, and you're talking to him as he's trying to navigate and either escape this dark prison, which is. You know, in the game, it kind of plays with themes of, you know, depression and, uh, you know, playing with your mind and psychosis, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you're trying to figure out, well, why is this guy here? What is going on with this? And it's really kind of cool. You know, you play, like, he'll do stuff and you can kind of see what he's doing, but you're constantly in a computer or in an electronic device typing back to him and responding to him. It's uh, really interesting. And they also have a really cool um, uh, daytime mechanic where if you, say, leave the guy who's very depressed and sad and if he's alone for too long he might kill himself or something like that you know i know this is getting kind of dark but if you leave it for a little while so say uh, what i did i to, to test it out basically i was playing the game i then left it for over i think it was 48 hours came back two days later and i got brought up to him basically uh, you know killing himself and then i had to start over the chapter you know it's very <laughs> they play with some different themes here for sure and it might not seem like a holiday game but i think if you like adventure point and click games this might be decent um i found like the puzzles and the actual gameplay part of it was not really that amazing the story didn't really click that well but i do think the premise and the concept is pretty good so if you're a big fan i'd say of point and click games i think this one might you might want to try this out but if you're not a fan of the you know reading a lot and point and click games and stuff like that definitely a skip uh, next game is called Alwa's Awakening and this is a true like 8, 8 bit kind of style uh, platforming game that you would see back in the day you know think of the, what I would compare it to uh, I guess for most people to understand is like Zelda 2 kind of a thing but uh, you know you're basically a mage and you can like shoot different fireballs and you have different magic tricks but yeah it's a very basic kind of action platformer and uh, it's got some very nice music and it was it's just a really well-made action platform. If this came, sorry, if this came out back when uh, you know back in the days like NES kind of thing, this would be you know this would probably be a hit. You know what I mean? Playing it now, it's kind of like you know you can kind of see the age. It kind of it, it kind of hung its hat on you know kind of being a retro throwback. I think a little bit too much. But uh, it was definitely a, an enjoyment to play. I think it was actually really good. So if you're a fan of these type of, uh, you know, retro action platforming games, you know, jump, you hit the enemies, you solve puzzles, you go after bosses. I think it's actually pretty good. And, you know, it's got a, it's got a nice little bit of charm to it. And, uh, yeah, I think, again, if you're a fan of these type of games, I think this is definitely a good one. Uh, next game is called Party Hard from Tiny Build. And uh, this game really disappointed me. <laughs> so... The game is interesting in the fact that basically you're a serial killer and you go into different parties throughout different locales and stuff with different varying amount of people and you have to basically kill everybody at the party without getting caught. It's a really intriguing premise and I really thought it was really cool and even when you're playing it's really cool but the game is stupidly hard and you can't really pass on to the next level unless you kill literally every single person you know, in that, uh, in that scenario. Um, and it's just really difficult. I literally could not get past the first level. I've tried so... I've, I've played the game for maybe three hours, trying the same first level, trying to just beat it. Like, sometimes I go in just thinking, yeah, I'm just going to kill people and hopefully the cops don't catch me, blah, blah, blah. I'll do that. But then, you know, I'll take the one run where I'm like, yeah, I really want to do good on this one. Then, like, some stupid reason I'll get caught at the end. And 
I just the thing I think the problem with the game was is that you know basically what the game does is you have like a knife you can stab people you can pick them up hide them in places so you don't get caught or people don't call the cops on you or you got to make sure people don't see you when you're doing it or there's traps throughout the whole scenario the whole level where basically like you can you know open up an electric panel and leave a wire near a puddle and people walking by it will get electrocuted and die or you can set a fire in a room you know firefighters would come by or you can uh, do a call somewhere else calling a hit on somebody then like people would come in or SWAT team could have attacked somebody killing a bunch of people you can turn on a car it could run over a mow over a whole bunch of people you know there's a lot of different things and it's really cool in that way but a lot of them just don't really seem to I don't know, there's some sort of like engagement with each one where it's like you just kind of hit the A button, it does its thing, and then you go back to doing the same thing where you just kind of wait for someone to get isolated, kill them, do that over and over again. And there's a ton of people in, in these levels. The first level has like 45 people you have to kill. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just complaining. Maybe it's just a good, you know, a get good thing. But I think I'm going to still keep trying to beat at least this first level. I like the idea. I like the premise. The I think, again, the graphics... It's a, you know, it's a pixel art kind of thing. I feel like a lot of people are kind of getting a little bit bored of that, but um, for what the game is, I think it's actually pretty good. It looks pretty nice. It's got some cool uh, color palette and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's got some, you know, interesting kind of call-ins, you know, like a Mario shows up and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, you know, um, you know, I, I just wish something just there's just something about the gameplay there where it just doesn't really click as well it just it seems like a little disjointed you know that just doesn't match as well and it's very difficult but um yeah i'd, I'd suggest you guys take a look at it, take a look at a trailer for it see if it might be of interest to you and maybe wait for a sale for it because uh for me you know i got those few hours of gameplay out of it but i didn't really beat the first level so that definitely brought down my enjoyment maybe maybe i'm not good enough maybe if someone else beats that first level and just kind of cruises through the whole game it's much more fun for them but for me it kind of dragged it down but that is a uh, party hard for switch as well uh next game Crimson Keep. So this is a first-person, uh, I guess you'd say roguelike RPG game, um, which is, you know, we see a ton of roguelike games everywhere, but a lot of them are usually kind of top-down roguelikes and stuff like that, whereas this one is first-person a la Skyrim, and uh, it's actually pretty good, but they definitely made some bad design decisions. So again, it's basically in just like a medieval world, you're facing skeletons and like zombie creatures, elemental creatures, you know, ogres and orcs and stuff like that. And yeah, essentially, there's just this keep that was just taken, taken away, all these people in this village were killed. And now there's this keep and everyone, uh, you know, around is trying to attack the evil witch that took over this keep. And basically, it just sunken into the ground, you have to travel through and go through and get to the level where you can actually beat the witch herself um you know it's it's again it's got the basic kind of a you know item management where you can have equipment for your neck chest you can ha equip a shield you have your a sword but thing is with it being a roguelike game it just doesn't really build up as much and you don't really carry over anything that you've made throughout the game before so it's really just playing the same game over and over again until you die and it is definitely a very tough game i did make it through a couple uh, levels down but yeah, I don't know. It's just it, it runs well. Uh, initially, it had a very very poor frame rate, but they had an update uh, somewhat recently, I think, and now it's a very smooth game. It's really well made, but just some of the design decisions decisions there, just as far as a roguelike game goes, I love roguelike games when they're done well, and this one was not done well, sadly, um, design wise, because again, you don't really progress even when you're dying like you do runs and you're you can literally do five runs in a row and not progress anything when you die again you know there's no constant uh, upgrading that you're doing that's making you better and better when you're playing other than just your skill level which does work but doesn't mean it's going to be a fun time but yeah that's uh, crimson keep guys it's pretty good it's coming from merge games they have a lot of good games under their catalog especially for switch but this one a little bit tougher to uh to swallow i guess you could say um next game is okunaka which is really good platformer game a la super meat boy the end is nigh those type of games where it's like you have one set level you have very tough platforming to do try to speed run it try to get to the uh to the end of the level move on to the next and it's a uh, really good actually this is probably one of the better ones that i'm going to be talking about today um, you know, very pretty sort of hand-drawn art style. It's got a little bit of a story, but it's really nothing. You're just kind of like a little little creature that's trying to like save the world kind of a thing. It's nothing nothing too crazy. But um, yeah, just again, as far as the platforming goes and the controls and the level design, 
really good. It's got an element where you basically just switch elements from, uh, you know, frost to pop up and uh, lava to pop up. It really doesn't have much sense in the story or anything. But again, this game is mainly just about the gameplay and the uh, level design, which again is really good and tight. So, um, yeah, if you're a fan of those type of games, Cloudberry Kingdom, speedrunning kind of type of platformers, you know, going to be challenging you quite a bit. This was definitely a good one. I'd highly recommend this uh, this game, Oku Noka. Um, next game is called Long Story, which I'm still playing right now. I'm about, I think I'm about to complete it, but it is taking a long time, which is good because I love these type of visual novel style games. This is strictly visual novel. Next to no gameplay, all you're really doing is hitting uh, the A button and selecting some uh, dialogue options. But this game is basically about a story of, uh, of a high school student that moved away to France. Then he's moving back to his old high school again, um, meeting some, of it, you know, and just trying to live his life again, moving back into high school. Which is kind of an interesting kind of game to <laughs> jump into again, you know, being out of you know high school for you know years now, right? Um, it's kind of cool to kind of jump back in there and see, hey, maybe this is how uh, you know high school students act nowadays and stuff like that, and seeing how you would react to different crazy situations that are happening. Um, it's got like a bit of a mystery element to it, you know. It de definitely deals with some themes as well, and uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, it's got an interesting sort of cutesy art style. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of it, but I think it does its job pretty well. Um, it doesn't have much animation. It's more just kind of slideshow of uh, photos that kind of work together, but with uh, pretty good writing. Um, it's got some interesting music that go along with it. Each character has kind of like a theme that kind of pops up when they're there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. You know, it's uh, I think if you like these type of visual novel, uh, visual novels or like anime, maybe this isn't an anime, though. This is coming from a Western developer. But uh, yeah, if you're, if you're a fan of those type of games and kind of just there for a story, I think this might be a good option. It's got some uh, pretty interesting chapters and I'm still playing through it and I've been playing for hours now. So um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think, again, if you're a fan of these type of things, I'd say take a look at a video, see if that would be of interest to you. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think you can go wrong with that as far as visual novels go. So that is a long story for the eShop as well. Uh, next game. Rock Boshers DX. So this was a pretty interesting uh, <laughs> game here. So this is straight up like top down eight bit kind of a game, but it it's got some interesting cutscenes. It's like you're going to, but yeah, the game uh, basically you play as Queen Victoria and the and Earth has tried to inhabit Mars, but when people get just flown out there, they get basically abducted and forced to slave labor, and you need to break them out of uh, these mines that they're working in. And uh, yeah, you're Queen Victoria with guns. Uh, it's very interesting, like the the art style. Like again, it's it's just like an eight bit kind of art style, but you know sometimes it'll be side view. Most of the time, it will be top down view where you're kind of shooting uh, your pistol or collecting different weapons and killing zombie enemies that are coming after you or the police that. Are coming after you, uh, you know, trying to you know put you back in incarceration, um, and uh, yeah, no, it's a very interesting game. Um, just again, like the story wise, the whole aesthetic looks really nice, very colorful. Uh, each level is kind of its own little bite sized puzzle, along with the action element with it, where you actually have to destroy a whole bunch of boulders and stuff because you, again, you're within a mine, right? Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's definitely really good. Um, I've, I've definitely enjoyed my time with it for sure. Um, quite a few levels to it. Uh, there's four different worlds, or sorry, three different worlds, and um, each one has ten different levels in it, so quite a lot of uh, gameplay, and uh, 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 there's even replay value in the timing of everything, and uh, yeah, no, I, I think if you're a fan of these kind of throwback games but not just like it's doing its own thing as well and it's got some unique kind of create it kind of reminds me of codename steam with like the kind of over the top like you know dialogue and uh, uh you know story and stuff like that so if you're kind of a fan of that kind of stuff it's kind of doing something a little bit different but still kind of going back to kind of a retro aesthetic and sort of feel i think uh yeah uh rock washers dx is definitely a good game as well uh next game is shadow of loot box which I don't know. Uh, the whole game is kind of based on loot boxes and it's kind of jabbing fun at the industry. So it's like, you know, incredibly self-aware. But, um, you know, it's a first-person shooter, uh, I guess, role-playing game, you could say. And essentially, you have to unlock different abilities as you're playing. You know, you have to unlock the, the ability to jump or spend money to be able to shoot a weapon or... You know, you kind of go through these levels like that. You go to different villages, and it's just an incredibly self-aware game. It's it's in a whole pixel art kind of aesthetic. It looks like a Minecraft game, but you have guns and stuff like that. Not a huge fan of this. I did kind of play it a little bit, and I got kind of hooked into it a little bit. You know, I played it for a couple hours straight. But, 
uh, just something about it, just about how self-aware it is. It really doesn't kind of push to be anything better than what it is. So I think if you look at, uh, if you watch a trailer and if you think it's kind of an interesting look to you, then that's pretty much what you're going to get. And then I'd suggest it. But I would, for right now, I'd say wait for a sale if you are interested in it. If not, I think this is kind of a passable game. Nothing too crazy about it. Um, next game is uh, Rage in Peace, which I think uh, was popularized by PewDiePie when he was playing it and other streamers because the game is ridiculously tough. It is another kind of speed running platformer, but you're basically just running left to right. You do have control of your character though, but essentially you're just, you know, it's uh, just basically an endless runner, but <laughs> essentially, okay, so I guess I got to go over this whole thing. Story is essentially you're just a an office worker. You're kind of down about yourself and a Grim Reaper shows up and says, hey, you're going to die sometime today. And you're like, holy shit, well, what do I do? <laughs> Essentially, you're just trying to get home to relax in your PJs kind of a thing before you die that day. So you're trying to escape your office, but everything around there, you know, fate has told you, you know, Grim Reaper showed up saying you're going to die. So fate is trying to kill you in any means possible. So essentially, you're running through an office building, through wasteland, through all this kind of stuff, trying to get away, you know, through time, going through pyramids and stuff, just trying to get back to your house. And all these random things just keep coming out and trying to kill you. So you'll be running along like a, just a flat floor and all of a sudden spikes will come up through the floor. And you have to memorize where those spikes are. There are some tells to see where they would be, but nothing too blatant or clear. So a lot of this game is going to be trial and error. And I feel like a lot of people won't enjoy it for this. But if you're streaming and if you like that kind of a game, I think, yeah, this is definitely, I can see why it was a big hit for streamers. Because, you know, there's a lot of like frustration and a lot of craziness that goes on in the game. And it's, uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, the platforming is decent enough, you know, but again, a lot of it is just kind of puzzling and, um, you know, trying to learn the patterns and just being able to go through each level. Um, I, I did play through the first few levels just uh, as normal kind of a mode, but they do have kind of an easy mode where it would basically give you an extra checkpoint throughout each level or an extra few checkpoints throughout each level so that you're not starting from the beginning every time because... It does get pretty long and definitely gets very difficult. But uh, yeah, as far as just like kind of straight up platformer games like this goes, I think I think if you're a streamer, I think it's definitely good for people to watch as you play, uh, especially if you get frustrated and you get very animated with that stuff. Just me personally, just playing it alone, I, I think I prefer more skill based and less just kind of memorization based, which I guess is a skill. But um, you know, I did have my uh, my little bit of fun with it, and it does have some like interesting kind of characters and some boss battles and stuff like that. You know, it's an interesting little game, and uh, if uh, if it looks like that might interest you, I'd suggest, uh, yeah, maybe giving it a try. But also, you can probably just watch PewDiePie play it and probably just have as much fun. Um, uh, another uh, game is called My Brother Rabbit, which is a very interesting... Uh, I It's, it's kind of like uh, Alice in Wonderland, I'd say. Uh, kind of a, a point-and-click adventure game, puzzle game, right? So essentially, you're um, just a rabbit. There's a I guess a creature of a forest that gets kind of depressed and saddened by this kind of poison toxic uh, you know being that kind of shows up and you need to kind of clear her mind and make her happy again um, but yeah basically you're a rabbit you're in your own little hut in this imaginary uh, imaginative fantasy land and it's got some really unique uh, kind of interesting art and stuff like that it's got some very smart puzzles actually the design like this game is incredibly well designed as far as the puzzles go you know there's always uh, hints for where you need to go but that's kind of part of what you need to find a lot of it is kind of finding where um, you know say say there's an objective to find 15 balloons so that you can lift up a lid that will uh, open up into a uh, you know a pearl that someone needs or something like that um, so you need to find 15 balloons so you got to think where are these you know you got to have a perceptive eye for that kind of stuff but then there's also some puzzle solving uh, throughout and uh, yeah it's just kind of a typical point and click game nothing too special with it but um, again, I think just visually it looks really nice. It's designed really well. I was never, I find a lot with these type of point and click games, I get very stuck and then I just don't feel like playing them anymore. Whereas this one, I never felt like I was stuck. I was always finding something new. I could always find where to go. So always new places that were opening up. So it was always unique to see these different locations and some of the characters, you know, it, it's a very well-made point and click game. So if you're a fan of the straight up traditional point and click adventure games like this, this one might be a good uh, goodbye. Um, if you're not a fan of point and click whatsoever, do not even go near this. This is as traditional as it gets. 
uh, speaking to the next game, which is not per se a point and click, more of a vi- choose your own visual novel type game where it's, uh, it's called Monster Loves You. Really weird name for a game too. I really didn't like that and I didn't, really didn't like the aesthetic of the game either, but essentially you play as a monster growing up from you know a small amoeba all the way to a big monster kind of either taking over a world or uh, attacking humans or doing whatever you want to do. But um, yeah, you basically you're going through, you're selecting different dialogue prompts of what you want to, how you want to act, and you basically increase your stats of how you are. And then towards the end of the game, there's I think 12 different endings. Some of them could be saving the human race, some could be ending it, some could be killing the monster race, could be a lot of different things. There's a whole bunch of different endings based on what you select and how you kind of treat your monster and how you treat other monsters and humans and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting in that way, but I think this is definitely more for kids to play. It's interesting in that way. But then again, if it's for kids, I, I don't know how much kids actually really enjoy kind of visual novels like this. It's a lot of reading. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know where exactly this fits. I wouldn't suggest this game personally. Um, I do love visual novel games, but this one just didn't really hook me. It didn't have like some big grand story that I could really invest myself in. It was just kind of like, yeah, you know, my monster's a dick now. Oh, but now he's happy to these people. So now I increase my happiness or my niceness uh, stat over here. And then I increase my uh, ferocity over here or something. I don't know. Not not my cup of tea, but let me know if you guys have uh, tried it out and let me know what you guys think. Uh, next game, Energy Cycle Edge, and then this is another ridiculously tough puzzle game. I did not. This is a sequel to Energy Cycle that was on the Switch as well, which I think did pretty well. But this game, very difficult, very basic. Uh, looks kind of nice. It's got some interesting sort of artwork and stuff like that, but nothing too special. Um, but yeah, essentially, uh, you have a grid with random patterns of lights and uh, they're basically I guess flames and you can change the color of one flame but if you change that color of one flame all the adjacent colors will switch into the next one in the line so say there's three different flames you can be there might be green red and blue flames everywhere if you change this blue like the center blue flame all the flames around will then switch to the next flame in line right and you got to make sure that the entire puzzle that you get is matched up with the same color so I think that's that's again that's basically what the gist is. These levels are incredibly tough. I beat maybe what was it four of them, and I literally just could not find figure out five. I feel like they should have some sort of better progression developing into the later levels because it kind of just throws you in there. I'm sure the first game maybe had that, but I just jumped into the second one here, and uh, yeah, very difficult. You do feel good when you beat it, but it, again, it's just basic. You just go to a different flame. You hit A, it switches, and you figure out the end of that level, and then you move on to the next. There's no story to it. There's nothing else. It's just an aesthetic with some interesting characters drawn for some random reason. Would not suggest this uh, unless you're really diehard, uh, you know, crazy puzzle fan and really want to kind of invest in it here. Whereas this one, it just kind of threw me off with how tough it was right from the get-go. I only beat those few. Yeah, let me know what you guys think if you're a big fan of these type of puzzle games. Uh, Next game is called Mace, which is a top-down 2D shooter, and uh, it's kind of basic. Again, the the graphics look clean, you know, but it's nothing special. The ships are a little bit big, you know, the enemies aren't anything too crazy. They don't bring anything too, you know, unique, and even in bullet patterns or anything like that. It's just kind of a paint-by-numbers top-down 2D shooter, and, you know, I thought it was okay. I thought it was decent. I played through a little bit of it. nothing too special so I, I wouldn't suggest this one i think there are better ones out there on the switch right now but hey maybe take a look maybe maybe the art style clicks with you um you know it's it's well made it's not like it hiccups or anything it's incredibly smooth it, it, you know it just it, i guess just not my cup of tea um next game swamp defense 2 uh yeah a very basic tower defense game uh, I love tower defense games, so I definitely want to give this a try. But again, it's just such a paint by numbers tower defense game. It was nothing special to it whatsoever. Um, but uh, you know, it's tower defense. If you like tower defense and you're aching for one on Switch, uh, to be honest, I don't know too many of them on Switch. Uh, I know there's a few, and there's a few unique ones out there, but uh, um, including one from uh, uh, Daniel Cuthbert, I believe. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the what the name is of that. Uh, that came from Cuthbert, but um, yeah, yeah. As far as Swamp Defense Two goes, not suggested. I, it seems like it's straight from like an iPhone or something like that. Um, 
Next game is The Legend of Evil, and this is kind of interesting because it's similar to one of my favorite Wii U indie games called Sword and Soldiers uh, 2, and Sword and Soldiers, which came out on Wii and 3DS and everything else as well. Um, Because, yeah, it's essentially you don't really control your characters directly. However, you you are kind of an overarching, like, ghost kind of taking care of your tower. And essentially, you have uh, one base on one side of the map, one base on the other, yours and your enemy. And you just have to um, spawn different enemies uh, or different uh, units of yours to go and attack the other enemy. You got to see what enemies they're bringing out and then match the amount that you're bringing out or the different types to kind of take over what their uh, weaknesses are. And uh, it's very difficult, but uh, I think that I actually really like that for this game because you were kind of progressing throughout the game. You know, you were getting better with it. You were, uh, you know, unlocking new uh, units to use. And um, yeah, it's def- it was definitely difficult, but I definitely enjoyed it in that way. Not nearly as good as Sword and Soldiers, though. So I would say this is a game for a sale. Um, if you haven't played Sword and Soldiers 2 or Sword and, Sword- Sword and Soldiers on uh, 3DS or Wii or I think it's on PS4, I'd suggest trying those first. But this is a decent game, Legend of Evil. So I'd say wait for a sale for this game, though. Uh, next game, Whispering Willows. This is another visual novel, but more, uh, I guess, point-and-click adventure game. It's a lot of a lot of communication, a lot of talking, a lot of stuff like that. But there is uh, quite a bit of puzzle solving as well. Uh, in fact, I'd probably say it's more of a, a, a you know adventure game in that aspect where you're just kind of moving around. But the key uh, element to this uh, this game here, Whispering Willows, uh, I guess I should kind of jump into the story first. Um, essentially. Uh, you're a little girl. She has lost her father, cannot find her father. He was abducted or something like that. So she goes to the grounds where he was last seen. And uh, she falls down into a pit and she finds a ghost that essentially can, I guess, abduct her and create her as a ghost. And she can basically go through walls and stuff like that to unlock doors and, uh, you know, unlock and, you know, use to use uh, to um, finish different puzzles. Wow, that took a little while to explain. Um, but yeah, so essentially, yeah, she just kind of creates a different, uh, you know, being of herself and that can go through walls and stuff like that to unlock different puzzles for it. And you just kind of move through these levels, meeting different uh, characters that have that are part of these grounds. And uh, hopefully you can find your dad and uh, save him. You know, not a, you know, at least it has kind of an interesting premise behind it. But again, this one did not really capture my... Um, you know, interest. The puzzles were good. It looks very pretty. The hand-drawn kind of graphics and stuff. It's got some interesting kind of elements and different set pieces in the in the game, but the story just didn't catch me as well. Um, but uh, yeah, again, if you are a fan of these type of adventure games like this, I again, I'd suggest just see the trailer, see if that clicks you, because it's definitely a well-made game. It's just whether it's for you or not. But yeah, that's Whispering Willows for Switchy Shop. Um, just a few more. Uh, Haunted Dungeons, uh, Hiyaki Castle. So this is another first-person RPG uh, type game. However, this one's a little more um, retro in the fact that it plays like the grid-based sort of uh, uh, RPG games where you know you move forward, you spin to the right, you move forward, you spin to the right, you move forward. And uh, the key element that's different in this game, whereas, you know, this one you have like a party of four, you have swords, you can attack the enemies when you're there, you know, typical this type of dungeon crawler, right? Um, however, this one, the one element that you can not have is that you can kind of split your party up amongst different uh, screens, I guess. Like, so you can split your screen into, say, four different things and have all your different, uh, uh, you know, your different characters moving separately from one another. So you move to create another. So basically, you can flank an enemy with this. So essentially, um, say you're facing up against an enemy. They're right in front of you. You can then split your party, have the party that you've left continue to attack, move your party behind that other enemy, and then attack it from behind, causing more damage and killing that enemy quicker as you have two separate parties attacking at once. Um, it's got that kind of little bit of that, but it also is used in its puzzle solving where you split the parties up to unlock different switches and stuff like that. And yeah, it's definitely a unique kind of, uh, element that they threw in there. However, if you don't like dungeon crawler games, that's not going to change your mind about this. It's very paint by numbers, dungeon crawler game, no crazy story to really go over, but, uh, yeah, it, it was a pretty decent dungeon crawler. So I'd suggest if you are a dungeon crawler fan, take a look at a trailer again, I'd suggest that. And, uh, yeah. Uh, this might be a game for you. It's definitely well made, but again, only if you're a fan of dungeon crawlers should you be uh, taking a look at Haunted Dungeons Hiyaki Castle. Uh, next game is called Numbala, which is 
interesting. Uh, one of the reasons why I was hoping I could review this is because I haven't really reviewed or really played a numbers learning game in, you know, forever. Uh, so I don't even know how they'd be doing that nowadays. But yeah, Numbala is out and it's, yeah, like a number learning game. But it's actually kind of difficult, like not because of like the math or anything that you're doing. It's just essentially what's happening is you're a spaceship and you're going along, uh, you know, a grid plane from left to right. And you need to match up and shoot numbers of the same amount that is kind of popping up. So um, there's a number two. Uh, you go to the second grid line, a second from the bottom. You have to shoot that and go through that area. And you just have to keep shooting and matching up and getting a higher score and going through the level without crashing into anything. So there really wasn't actually that much like addition or anything like that or math. Like uh, later levels, they do add in stuff like that. But at least for the first little while, it was just kind of match going to where the number is and shooting that number. And it's got an interesting kind of control scheme where you're kind of not really controlling the ship directly. It's more just moving it to that grid line and then letting, you know, then hitting A to kind of shoot it kind of a thing. You know, it, it's got a very nice art style. It's got like sort of a story to it with like a cute kid and a dog and stuff. So I know it's definitely meant for younger kids, but the game got pretty difficult at times too. Um, it's it's kind of interesting. And uh, honestly, I don't know how much learning that's really going to do. But again, I, I don't think I'm really the target market for it. But all I can say is it's definitely a well-made game, you know, made by professionals. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that it does kind of teach kids as well. It might just get them to kind of recognize numbers a little quicker and understanding what they are. But um, yeah, no, that's Numbala. I think uh, if you have a kid and they might want a cheap, uh, nice little game on the eShop that you want to have them learn and not, you know, just be gore and random stuff that pollutes their mind, then this one might be uh, good for you. Um, a few more games left. Uh, Feral Fury is the next game. This is a top down uh, shooter, uh, roguelike again. However, this one doesn't have co-op, which kind of sucks. But um, basically, you play as a bunch of pandas. They crash land on a on a on a uh, on a world, and you have to go and save uh, the rest of your pandas as all these ships were crashing down into this uh, this area. So you have to go through each of these levels. It's completely roguelike, but you do kind of build up um, your stats as you play. So yes, the roguelike element in this game is really good and definitely got me hooked for a little while. Uh, very gory. You know, you pick up a lot of different weapons. Um, and uh, yeah, it just controls well. It's a, it, again, it doesn't do anything extraordinary. It does roguelike very well with how it is. But again, I don't think that's like a major accomplishment when so many roguelikes are doing that nowadays. Um, I do think there are better ones out there on Switch, but I think this is uh, definitely one of the better well-made roguelike uh, twin stick type shooter games. And uh, yeah, again, if you if you like kind of the aesthetic, I think it's definitely worth a, uh, a look. Um, next game, Pilot Sports. So... Yeah, this is pretty much just a ripoff of Pilot Wings. Uh, yeah, not nearly as good. Got some kind of wonky sort of controls. The graphics aren't that amazing. But if you're looking for a cheap version of Pilot Wings on the Switch, I think you have it right here. You know, it, it has like jetpacks, it's got, you know, gliders, it's got planes, it's got all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, all the it's got a ton of levels too, actually. It's a huge amount of game in this. And, uh, yeah, if. Again, I don't think I'm the target market for this type of game, but it, for kids, especially around Christmas time, if they're, you know, if they really want to look forward to playing, you know, airplane, you know, being in a pilot or something like that in the future, they really like airplanes. I think this one could be a kick for them. And again, it's cheaper. You'd be able to play it, um, you know, and along with many other games you can maybe get over Christmas time. I think uh, it's actually a decent game in that aspect. You know, it works well enough. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Again, kind of paint by numbers, but. I think it's actually pretty decent so that's uh, pilot sports for the eShop um, two more Friday the 13th killer puzzle so Friday the 13th killer puzzle is a huge surprise to me actually because I am not a huge Halloween fan uh, the movies or the or the uh, holiday I'm not you know enamored with it I used to when I was a kid but you know the older I get the more I'm just like yeah it's just an excuse for people to you know go out and dress slutty and stuff like that you know no problem with that but you know, so I, I don't really have kind of a, a big, uh, you know, a factuation with that or anything like that um, uh, with Halloween. But uh, yeah, Friday the 13th Killer Puzzle is like an actual Halloween themed, like really well made Halloween themed puzzle game. Um, 
probably the best like Halloween game out there honestly like I've heard good things about the recent like Friday the 13th or um, uh, I think it was like a recent game that came out but this is really good uh, essentially what you have is a grid based uh, puzzle game where you have Jason I think it's Jason right and he has to basically you just slide him from one end to the other he can only if you move him to the you know move him up he goes all the way as far as he can up unless there's an obstacle blocking him if you move him right he goes all the way as far as he can and you kind of keep doing that and you got to kill every single person on that map and essentially it's usually kind of a set um sequence of moves that you can do in order to beat it at a certain time or you know with a certain amount of moves uh, but you can do it without you know kind of meeting that criteria and uh, yeah, every time you go up to a person, you have some like gory, cartoonish, cool looking kill, which is kind of hilarious. Like, you know, you're gonna be like decapitating these people, blood's flying everywhere. You know, they're this like little doll looking cartoon characters. And it's just kind of crazy. I had no idea. Like, it's a really well made puzzle game. And uh, yeah, I'm completely surprised by it. So um, yeah, if you're a fan of puzzle games or Friday the 13th, I think this is actually a really good one. Um, if you're a fan of these type of puzzle games, I, I guess I'll put a disclaimer on it because it's not like it's amazing. I'm not the biggest fan of these type of puzzle games. You know, I like more of like the actual like brain teasing kind of puzzle games like that. But yeah, no, this is a really well made game. Um, very surprising. Friday 13th, the killer puzzle. Um, and the last game I want to talk about is Akihabara Feel the Rhythm Remixed. So I wanted to talk about this last actually because I actually went to Tokyo and Akihabara um, in November. Of this year and it was really amazing and uh, the culture and just just being there was an experience in itself so seeing a game come up like literally the week after I get back called Akihabara Feel the Rhythm I was very excited and playing it now um, very basic sort of Tetris like I actually I probably compare it more to Puyo Puyo but um, actually and a little bit of Luminous mix in there as well just a few levels you play them for like 30 minutes um, it's really just kind of playing this kind of really relaxed, laid-back game with the music of Akihabara and the lights and the colors, with the cute anime character on the front. Not much else to it, really. Again, it's more of just for relaxing. It does pick up the later you go into a level, the longer you've been in there. It goes quicker, and you know you just have to clear out these blocks. Essentially, you just have to make a block into you know and connect four of the same kind and together and then you have to basically click a button on time with a beat to then get rid of those blocks in in a sequence right um yeah not much else to it but i thought it was actually a pretty interesting uh game just for me to come out after being in tokyo and akihabara um and uh yeah no i think it's definitely a decent uh puzzle game in that aspect however i would say wait for a sale because there's not too much game to it maybe maybe hour and a half of gameplay um, in there, unless you just really want to kind of play and listen to the music over and over again, which is kind of the point of rhythm games, but there's just not too many uh, songs or anything like that in here, so I'd say wait for a sale. If you're interested in going to Japan, this might be one that you want to see. It does kind of capture that sort of nightlife kind of experience in Akihabara and like nightclubs and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, there it is, guys. There's Those are my huge list, huge list of uh, indie games that I've been playing on the uh, eShop recently. Again, I love indie games. I love eShop games. Um, I love the different experiences. So like, even when I'm playing all these ones, I kind of enjoy being able to play something different because so a lot of these games and a lot of the genres these games kind of provide aren't really being made by larger developers anymore. So I can really appreciate it from these guys. And I want to thank you uh, for all these guys for sending me review codes for these. Um, I'm hoping uh, you guys enjoy this coverage here. Merry Christmas, everybody. And yes, here's the segment. I'm going to be going over all my gaming Christmas memories. And, you know, gaming is, you know, truly synonymous with Christmas for me. You know, ever since I was a kid, I would always be asking for, you know, some sort of a game or a console or something like that. And, uh, you know, being able to play games in the winter, you know, when you have either school off back in the day, you know, and you're having this time to, you know, be able to actually sit down and play games, you know, it's really cold out, you go outside during the day and you come back in, you want to bundle up warm with, uh, you know, like a hot chocolate or whatever and play some games or read a book or something like that, you know, gaming's always kind of, uh, you know, been part of the holiday season for me, so... Having, I definitely have some really uh, great memories uh, in my mind here, and I'd love to hear some of your guys' memories as well, because again, Christmas is really a special time of year for gamers, I think, and uh, yeah, I'd love to hear some of your guys' favorite gaming memories. I only have a few here that I can really go over, but one of my first 
memories as a kid, which is still ingrained in my brain, was um, one Christmas. I, I forget how old I was. I, I was maybe maybe like seven or eight, and uh, I got a Game Boy Color uh, for Christmas from my grandpa. He, he bought me and my brother um, Game Boy Colors. I got one of the neon green. I think it's called neon green. Yeah, neon green, and my brother got a, uh, a blue one. And uh, basically, we both grabbed those uh, Game Boys. We got I got Pokemon Red, and my brother got Pokemon uh, uh, Blue. And uh, we both ran down the stairs, went into the uh, was it the uh, the space under the stairs there. Uh, we had a little fort thing set up there with like a beanbag chairs and stuff, and we both played that game until like until like supper time basically um that's one of my first gaming memories and for like one of the earliest memories i remember as a kid is just playing that game constantly uh you know the day i got it which i never do that and uh that one there just totally took it from there so you know as soon as we were finished opening up gifts in the morning and stuff like that we spent the rest of that day just playing that game in the uh, you know and yeah just some great memories like that you know especially with pokemon back in the day like that you know pokemon i think is big for everybody uh you know everybody's kids out there around christmas i can you can only imagine how many pokemon games are getting bought for kids you know especially if they only get so many games a year they're probably going to be getting some sort of a pokemon game you know so uh i'm, I'm sure the uh, pokemon let's go eevee and pikachu are going to be huge this year uh for christmas but uh you know thinking back to when i played the first pokemon red and uh playing that on my brand new game boy and blasting the the volume so much that i ended up breaking up the breaking the volume dial so it's like basically sticky now like you have to almost like f like really force it to move up and stuff and you know any of the games i got later for the game boy i honestly i forget like the rest of the games I got I still have them but like just the order or like even playing them I do remember playing Azure Dreams as well but I think I got that way later and I have no idea who would have got me that game because I had probably no interest in buying that myself um you know just just thinking back then of like you know uh, like I don't even remember asking for a Game Boy but I just remember actually getting it and you know my eyes lighting up and just you know giving my grandpa a huge hug and like you know thanking everybody and yeah, no, like some great memories there, you know, like going and playing the game, being so incredibly, you know, excited to play it and uh, just it taking over my life for probably months. <laughs> um, uh, another uh, gaming memory that I have back in the day was uh, when I first got my GameCube. Um, I'm trying to remember how old I would have been around then. So that would have been when, when did GameCube come out? Was that 2001? So um, yeah, I would have probably been around uh, maybe 9 or 10 when I got my GameCube. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, was, it was something special there because I, I remember I got the Mario Kart Double uh, Dash Pack. And I think I got, uh, yeah, and it came with the Zelda Special Collector's Edition um, with like all the Zelda games up till uh, Wind Waker. But it also included the demo for Wind Waker, which is still my favorite Zelda game. So that was, I think that was the first game I played on my uh, GameCube, actually, was the demo from that game for Wind Waker. Uh, I was so very excited for Wind Waker when it was first announced, and just the sea and everything like that. It looked so beautiful, and playing the demo was awesome, but then also playing some of these Zelda games, because I, at that time, I don't think I played any of the top-down Zelda games. Maybe I played the first one briefly on an NES somewhere, but I, you know, I don't remember that myself, but... Um, yeah, yeah, no, that, that was definitely a really, a really great gift there. I think that was from my parents too, which I think was the first time, like, I, I'm sure with a lot of people, um, Christmas time and parents buying them gifts and stuff like that when they're younger, you know, um, I'm sure a lot of them, were, you know, back in the day, I think there's always kind of a worry of like, you know, games are going to fry your brains. Don't you, you know, you only play like an hour of it every night or, you know, you know they wouldn't really want to get you many games or anything like that so i think what i originally was kind of relying on was my grandpa to get me uh games and stuff like that or maybe my siblings with you know the help of my parents but um i think my parents like after a little bit of time like really just kind of were like fine with it as long as you know i did good in school had good grades and stuff like that then hey you know what you you deserve you know a, a reward i guess of a game uh, you know especially if you're still active outside too right so i kind of wonder what it's like nowadays you know is it like hey you just get your kid a smartphone they don't go outside anymore it doesn't matter you know, I kind of wonder about that. Like, what's it like for a kid nowadays to get games if that's, like, the only little bit they can get? Or are they getting a smartphone and they can just play free games all the time anyway? So it doesn't really matter that, 
they don't need to ask for a different game every so often or anything like that. Or they're not going to be playing just one game in that, you know, three, four month period until their, you know, until their birthday or until like Easter or something. If you guys get a gift for that, you know, kind of wonder about that. But although to be fair, I think Minecraft probably filled in that role. Whereas like, you know, kids would have a smartphone, but then they wanted Minecraft for something so that they could play that. But, um, yeah, so yeah, that's another one of my big gaming memories. Uh, that was always one of my favorites, um, playing the GameCube when I first got that, because that, that was really my first uh, own system, uh, where it was truly my own. Uh, all the other systems before that, other than the Game Boy, uh, all the consoles like N64 and all that stuff were always shared uh, amongst me, my brother, and even my sister sometimes. So it's just very cool to be able to play a, a system by your, like, you know, that you have by yourself. You know what I mean? Because um, whenever you know you play it before, it'd be like, hey, you know, let your brother play or whatever. Like everyone has to play if you have a system like that, right? If one person's playing, the other person's gonna want to play too. That's kind of just how it was back then. So again, just being able to get your own system and have that as truly your own, that was definitely a, a very special moment for me in my, I guess, my gaming uh, memories. Um, Trying to think of other Christmases. Uh, one of my favorite things about Christmases, at least for me and my brother, was I with me, if I wanted a game, I would usually just go buy a game. But with my brother, he would kind of wait on a lot of games and stuff like that. So for, for since as long as I can remember, pretty much I had like an unwritten rule that I would always going to get him like one or two games for uh, Christmas, right? Uh, usually I'd end up finding games that have been out for a while. They'd be used and they'd be cheaper so I can get, you know, more than just one game for him. Because uh, usually if there's a game that he really wants to play, he'd play it right away that's new. But a lot of the games that he's just like kind of, yeah, I kind of want to play it. I would like that I maybe want to play too. I would end up getting him those games. Uh, just saying like, hey, you know, they look good to me. So I assume they look good to you. So um, yeah, no, it's always cool to get stuff like that, you know, uh, you know, always giving away games like, that, or not giving away, but, you know, gifting games is always a lot of fun too. Um, I remember in uh, high school, I had a, a girlfriend actually got me a game, which is, you know, probably one of the best feelings ever. It's just like, wow, like you're like perfect. How the heck does this happen? You know what I mean? Like just being gifted a game from something like that is always, uh, always something special. Um, especially I think when you're younger, I think when you're older and you know, you, you know, when you have like long term girlfriends and stuff like that, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, I, cause you just kind of mesh as well, but when it's like high school and you only, you know, you may be dating that person for a few months or something like that. And, uh, and they get you like, you know, a game, like, uh, I think what was, uh, what was the one before actually this, uh, I forget the one I got, but uh, I, I, a friend of mine got UFC like Undisputed or something like that, or some UFC game back in the day, and uh, that was like a huge deal because like he was like flaunting and telling everybody, "Say, like, oh my yeah, like she got me this, she got me this," and you know he's, you know he was just pretty amazed by that, right? So that, that was always kind of a funny thing to remember. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what other uh, Christmas memories do I have as far as this kind of stuff goes. Uh, yeah, at a certain point, I, you know, if I wanted something like I was saying, if I wanted a system, I would probably just buy that at that time. I think after the GameCube, I don't think I waited to get a system from, yeah, I don't think I got a system from anything. After that, it would be like getting a new TV or uh, stuff that would kind of facilitate that or controllers, um, you know, and movies and stuff like that and books. Uh, that kind of facilitate video games. Uh, I do like getting some art books and stuff like that. I'm sure you guys have seen that. I have like all the Zelda ones. You know, I have like a Splatoon. I'm uh, hoping I might be able to get a Fire Emblem one soon. And, uh, you know, I have Professor Layton, Bayonetta, um, Xenoblade Chronicles, all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I love the art books as well. So I, I'd be getting a lot of those, um, you know, in the later years when I would just kind of get games whenever I wanted to. But it was always nice when I got kind of a surprise game. I'd kind of leave off a few of like from like a list or something like that and say like, hey, you know, like I just won't buy these hoping that uh, maybe my family might uh, give me these games or someone else might get me one of these games for Christmas or something like that. And it's always cool to like finally get one. I, I do remember um, somewhat recently, actually, uh, probably just only a few years ago, actually, I think I got Pokemon um, Sun. Uh, for Christmas, which is pretty cool because I don't think I put that on any like like list or told anybody that or anything like that. Um, I, I think uh, that was just kind of maybe my brother or someone uh, brought that up that I didn't have that yet. And that that's a game that like I'd probably like to enjoy. I just wasn't, I guess, willing to shit out money for it of myself. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool when that happens. Um, 
I guess this is uh, still a Christmas one. This is a little different. Uh, my family and I, at least my my siblings and I, um, every Boxing Day, which for Americans out there, if you don't know, Boxing Day is the day after Christmas when all the stores open up really early and they have crazy deals. It's essentially Black Friday, but the day after Christmas. So, you know, Christmas Day, every you know, we have a whole bunch of family over. We're all up very late. We're completely exhausted with all the food we ate and you know all the excitement of uh, that christmas day and stuff like that and uh but yeah essentially we all <laughs> me and my siblings will get up every morning at uh uh was like maybe like five o'clock in the morning or something like that to get to the stores for 6 a.m open um there's always uh boxing day uh flyers that come out like the day or a couple days before with all the deals they have and the door crashers and stuff like that so we want to get there early get in get any of the really good deals and try to get out without waiting in these gigantic lines with all these people that everyone's in like kind of a joyous mood though but also kind of like aggravated because it's in the morning it's an interesting uh um dynamic uh you know also all the you know like best buy employees and stuff like that that are just like you know they're working boxing day and they're all just like pissed off and it's it's interesting kind of dynamic because everyone again is like pretty joyous and still you know feel a holiday cheer and stuff like that but it's like you know really early in the morning on the 26th it's kind of funny but yeah so essentially i'd always go there i'd always be looking at games you know there's always these games that are getting really cheap on sale for boxing day you know like uh this year i'm looking at maybe a diablo 3 or crash bandicoot insane trilogy um last guardian on ps4 or um uh, there's there's a, there's quite a few games I'd be looking at to get uh, maybe even Call of Duty Black Ops 4 but usually the Activision games don't drop that much but a lot of these other games they'll drop you know 50 bucks because <laughs> it's like 80 dollars in Canada so they'll drop to like 30 bucks um, overnight right so it's always nice to you know I, it's good when you get gift cards and stuff like that too for Christmas so that you can actually use those there but yeah so we'll go there we'll look at all the electronics I'll usually get like Bluetooth earbuds and stuff like that and uh, you know, sometimes uh, we might find a really good TV on sale for cheap, and the games are always on cheap, Blu-rays on cheap, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, then after that, we all end up going to, it's a tradition, we always end up going to a McDonald's that's across the way, and we get our full McDonald's breakfast, I'll get the breakfast wraps, and I'll get an extra uh, breakfast wrap on top, have uh, extra of the salsa packs that they have, and uh, have the amazing hash brown in the morning with some coffee, or it's just a really, uh, you know, it's a really nice tradition that we have. And, uh, you know, it seems weird going out and buying right after Christmas. But, um, you know, it, it's it's just, it's always a little interesting. You know, <laughs> you know, like, you just get all this stuff for Christmas or whatever. You know, you're gifting this or you get gifted this. You spend all this money or, you know, other people spend all this money on gifts. And then the day after, you're like, oh, got to go get this. It's cheap. <laughs> you know, it's interesting how, you know, our kind of like Western culture kind of does this stuff. It's interesting. But, um, you know, it's still, uh, you know, it's it's a nice time, you know, that everyone's still, again, like I was saying with like holiday cheer and it's always a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, guys, I think that's, uh, most of my, uh, Christmas, uh, gaming related memories, you know, um, I definitely want to hear what you guys have, uh, some of your memories. Uh, you know, I, I always find it interesting to see how other families kind of go about Christmas and, uh, you know, are, is your family like willing to, you know, give games to you when you're younger? Is that, is that one thing that you do? Um, like, do you, you know, do you get like stockings and stuff with, uh, games and, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I'd love to hear what some of you guys have as some of your, uh, traditions and what happens with you, especially when you were younger. Um, uh, you know, I, th I think, again, that's just really interesting to see how different families can be if you're either living in different parts of the world or just, uh, you know, just grew up in a different set of circumstances. So, yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys uh, think, uh, some of your Christmas memories. And, uh, yeah, again, I just want to say Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of this podcast. And, uh, yeah, I will see you all next time in uh, 2019. Hey, everyone. This is No Filter. And Christmas is the best time of year to play some co-op and multiplayer games, especially on, yes, the Nintendo Switch. With the double Joy-Con play, you can play all these games right out of the box with a friend or a family member. And again, this is perfect for Christmas time, so here are 10 of some of my favorites on Nintendo Switch eShop right now. And these are all smaller games, so you can buy multiple and play multiple of these for your switch without having to spend a solid 60 80 dollars on one game to play with your family right so let's get started 
First game is called Horizon Chase Turbo. Now I'm sure a lot of you have already seen this game, but it is a gorgeous arcade racer. And it has co-op, which is awesome for a game like this, right? You can actually play with four player split screen and it still holds the incredible performance while it's playing. Really a fantastic racing game. Great for single player content as well, but having multiplayer on top of that, this game really has quite a lot in its package. So this is my number one right here, Horizon Chase Turbo. Maybe you're bored of playing Mario Kart all the time, so this might be a good option for you. The next game is called Nidhogg 2, and this game is essentially a tug-of-war slash fencing uh, platforming game where essentially you are on one end of a, a level, the other person's on the other, and you have to try to run to the other person's uh, end of their level while they keep responding, attacking, and you essentially have a fencing move where you can jump and attack them from above, from below, from the middle, and you're just trying to run past them and get to their end uh, where you're basically you're just going to be eaten by a big uh, monster. And it is a f incredibly fun party game, a lot of fun single player too, but again, multiplayer is where it's at with this game and it is a blast. I highly suggest you guys take a look at this game, really fun. The next game is called Skyscrapers, and this game has four player multiplayer where you are basically running up a side of a building while there's debris and random stuff falling. If there's a debris landing at a different angle, you can jump on that debris and then launch yourself even further the higher of an angle that debris is at, and you just want to make it to the top as quick as possible while you have your enemies also attacking with with their staffs and their swords and stuff, and it's an incredibly frantic, crazy game, but the controls are very tight, and the platforming is really well done, and it looks very clean on the Switch screen. Next game is called The Walking Vegetables Radical Edition. Now this game, if you've played a game like say Enter the Gungeon, this is right at home for you. This is a top-down twin-stick shooter, however this has co-op multiplayer, which is awesome in this game. This is, in my opinion, the only way you should be playing this game is multiplayer. It is such a blast to play with that. You're attacking all these zombie vegetables that come after you. These crazy graphics are popping up everywhere. Little pixels flying everywhere. All these different uh, kind of guns that you get. It's just a lot of fun to play a game like this with some friends, especially when you're working towards a common goal and it's not competitive amongst each other. Sometimes you need to have that break around the holidays. Next game is called I Am The Hero, and this game is a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up with a very unique art style. It's kind of in a 2.5D plane, has some very uh, beautiful colors, kind of neon mixed in with it, and uh, it's, it's a good game single-player-wise, but I think it's a great game when you play it multiplayer. It's always a lot more fun when you're playing in multiplayer for a game like this, and uh, yeah, it's definitely a blast. It has some really cool combos that you can build up. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun to play multiplayer. So I think, again, this is another co-op game where you're kind of working together, beating up all the baddies, and uh, yeah, that would definitely be a lot of fun over the holidays. Next game is called Party Crashers, and this is another racing game. However, this was purely for the uh, vehicular combat and kind of mixed in racing elements that it has. Think uh, Mario Kart's battle mode, but purely in a racing style. So you have a lot of weapons and different things that you kind of trip up other people. You want to be the last one standing as a wave is a chasing uh, a chasing everybody. So you can't slow down and still win the race or anything like that. You have to, you're running away as fast as you can. You're trying to slow everyone else down as you're going. It's a lot of fun. You can really trip up some people that you're playing with and I'm sure it would lead to a lot of uh, interesting conversations and uh, swear words maybe when people are uh, getting tripped up and getting caught up and losing uh, by the you know by the last uh, bit of their hair next game is called Skyforce Anniversary and I know this is a great top-down vertical scrolling shooter single player but playing co-op is even better it's only local but again with the switch and the two joy cons being able to play this local awesome stuff really great game for that and uh, yeah, it's definitely really well made. Um, and having a co-op uh, partner with it will definitely help because the game can get pretty tough trying to unlock some of these medals throughout the game. So yeah, Skyforce Anniversary, definitely another good pickup if you want to play some co-op games over the holidays. Next game is called Varian, and this is a top-down twin-stick shooter. However, it has a unique twist to it. Um, it's got the very unique, you know, futuristic neon colors that you see a lot in these type of games. However, in order to shoot people in this game, you need to bounce your bullets off of walls. You cannot directly shoot somebody, you need it to bounce off walls. So it completely changes the whole aspect of you know a top-down twin, twin stick shooter. You have to really measure the angles of where you are. You have to be a little bit more deliberate. You know, It doesn't allow you to just shoot crazy because it's going off walls. You need to be able to aim and shoot, and it really requires some skill but it's not a big barrier of entry. You know, you get the hook really quick and being able to play with some friends 
Um, multiplayer is obviously a lot of fun as well. The next game is called Deru, the Art of Cooperation. Now this is a type of multiplayer game that I like to play. The co-op games like where you have to really be deliberate in what you're doing and think about how you can beat a puzzle. Um, it's a lot of fun when you have multiple minds thinking about it at once. And So this is a little different than the other multiplayer games where a lot of it's just kind of haphazardly either shooting anywhere or you know just driving as fast as you can and not really caring about what else is going on. This one you have to work together and it's a lot of fun. Um, you can play it single player, it's a little bit tougher though because essentially what you're doing is you're matching up uh, colors and trying to move a uh, an orb that you control to a different part of a uh, you know into a different part of a, a level where it won't be dying. Essentially you have to kind of move it through, block different lines from killing your orb with the other orb you control and just finally kind of make your way through the maze and get to the end of that level and move on to the next. You know, it's definitely a mind-bending game. It might not be for everybody, but for those that really want to kind of work together and think about how to, how to solve something, I think this is great, especially for the holidays. Now, the last game I have here before I have some honorable mentions is called Rockets, Rockets, Rockets. <laughs> so this is an arcade game as true as the name is, completely arcade experience. However, what this game is essentially you're just running, it's basically a top-down shooter, but you're not being launched as a rocket, and you need to shoot the other enemies either by dropping a bomb behind you or shooting in front of you, and you are moving incredibly fast, so you'll be swooping and flying all around everybody, you'll see the trail of where they've been, but they're going to be flying around so quick, and you have to really think ahead of where you're shooting or where you're leaving a bomb, it's just a blast, you know, four-player multiplayer, and being able to play something like that so quick and so unique, definitely a lot of fun. I would highly recommend this game as well. So here are three honorable mentions. Uh, the first game is called Toast Time. Uh, this has a great single player mode as well, but the multiplayer is where it's at. Uh, essentially what you have is a uh, you have a character, you can aim where you're going to shoot, you'll have a reticle go wherever you're going to aim, and if you shoot in that direction you will propel yourself the opposite direction so it's using a lot of your uh, the physics and momentum of uh, your shots in order to move where you're going to be so that you can shoot other people so you can't just stay in a corner somewhere and shoot because you're going to be moving everywhere you know what I mean it's uh, it's a lot of fun when you're doing that and uh, yeah just being able to play multiplayer with it is a lot of fun I uh, definitely uh, recommend uh, Toast Time as well uh, another game deployment is a lot like I'd say Varian in some ways however you don't need to um, deflect shots off of walls to kill people you do but essentially it's kind of a top-down typical um, online multiplayer as well as local multiplayer um, uh, twin stick shooter game where you can kind of shoot at each other directly you have like a kind of a phasing ability where you move to different rooms to avoid other people and uh, yeah it just it's kind of a basic twin stick shooter in that way nothing too crazy about it but it is definitely well made and has the online multiplayer as well which is a lot of fun uh, especially if say maybe you're away for the holidays and uh, a sibling of yours is away as well maybe you can pick that game up together and play that um, and the last honorable mention is called Vertical Drop Heroes HD. So this is a uh, 2D platforming game where you basically have to move down through a maze of uh, different enemies and different blocks, breaking blocks, going through, and just trying to get to the end of the level. But you can play multiplayer again, which is great. Having a co-op uh, partner as you're going through, the game can definitely get pretty tough. So having a multiplayer uh, partner to play with is definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of fun and uh, definitely useful in the game as well. So there it is guys, those are actually 13 co-op or multiplayer games for the Switch eShop that I think might be a good pickup for you guys uh, over the holidays. You know, getting family and uh, friends close and playing some um, games together like this is always a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I just want to wish you all a, a very Merry Christmas and I hope you all have a great New Year and I will see you all in 2019.